Hello and welcome back to uh, another episode of AG Engineering. Um, this is sort of running at the same time as the one uh, about the swinging arm, um, broken off bolts. I'm waiting for some drill bits on that so uh, we'll get back to that shortly when they arrive, should be uh, should be next week I think. Um, in the meantime, uh, as you can see I'll give you a diff bit of a different view of the workshop. People have been asking for um, sort of workshop tours and things that I'll get to <coughs> probably in the summer. I want to do a bit of a reorganisation later on in the year anyway and get uh, get the lathe that's in the garage into here and, and shuffle a few things about. And I was thinking of putting the, the motorbike ramp and the bike back in the garage. Trouble is with that one is the, um, the compensation. It's a, it's a concrete section of garage, it's not insulated fully so uh, it tends to get a little bit uh, drippy and rusty. Um, in here, it's although this again is a, a concrete sectional building, it's it's got plywood and insulation and everything on and you can see king span on the ceiling so it's a lot uh, it's a lot drier in here. Uh, but that's for the future. Um, we're trying that road mic again and uh, see what the sounds like on that. Um, I did have a, look, have a look at some of it, some of the previous footage, and I got, I got a funny sort of clicking noise over the soundtrack. Whether that comes out in editing, I don't know. I'll, I'll see in a while when I, uh, when I get to edit that. So, meanwhile, you can see the aerials on the uh, on the ramp and uncovered. Um, again, a few have asked what's under the covers. Well, there it is, uh, 1954. Aerial Red on Dirt 350 um, <coughs> with a few tweaks for modern riding. Well, it's got indicators on which a lot of people absolutely hate, but uh, I find are uh, pretty much essential in modern traffic. Um, bar end mirrors, it's got modern tyres on, not uh, not sort of uh, ribbed and block tread. It's got uh, a pair of Avons on it. Um, other than that, it's generally just sort of a uh, a using bike if I ever actually get to use it. Hopefully this summer uh, we'll uh, we'll get this out on the road and do some some video on the road. So uh, yeah, there it is. Um, doesn't get the love it deserves. Uh, I've had it for uh, for a long time. I'm actually the second owner from Noob, um, and I've had it for oh, how old was it when I got that pre. Uh, Pre-wife, so it's probably I was probably about 22 at the time, so uh, I have probably had that 30 years, something like that. So owned it for quite a long time. Um, Job-wise today, to carry on with for now, I've got a a yoke, an alloy bottom yoke here. That's um, it's for Norton Forks. But it's been in possibly something like a Sealy frame or, or similar, I'm told. Um, and it's got a steering stem in it that's shorter. There's a standard set of steel yokes. And it's a lot shorter on the stem than those. I'll we'll take that top nut off there. You'll see it's a little bit clearer. These are uh, 13 sixteenths, 26 and 13 sixteenths cycle thread on these, um, on these stems. Now this is possibly one, yeah I think it is possibly one I did quite a while ago. Um, they tend to suffer damage because there's a, um, I think it's a UNF version and the, the nuts get interchanged and the threads get wrecked. So I have in the past changed the stems on these for uh, for those ones we got made quite a long time ago. Um, now that's one of the stems that goes into that version, as you can see, and the guy wants the same stem in. In this version, so there's quite a difference in height 
Um, obviously the distance I've got to take from is from the underside of the bear into the top of the stem is the critical dimension there for the um, for the road fitting the um, the road holder frame. So I'll start by getting this stem out of here. I've got a feeling that might be too small. I think that's uh, it's the right diameter for that bit, but not for that bottom bit. So uh, it looks like a bit of a made-up assembly, possibly brazed up in there. So we'll, we'll get this pressed out and uh, have a look what's going on. So the first job is to get that taper race off the bottom. And for these, we have a bearing puller that is designed to go underneath the bearing track. This is this is the, a view of uh, what you're seeing. Right. Move that out the way. So there we've gone on. I'll just bring the camera in a little bit closer. It's better. All right, there you're seeing. That's gone on to there, and we'll tighten them the nuts up a little bit there. And that's just trapped underneath the race of the bearing. It'll probably destroy the bearing in the process of removing it, but uh, that's just how it is. Now, this I've had to extend longer. The original, I think the original one was. Yeah, they're just a little bit too short. So what I've done is made a couple of adapters to suit the um, the studs off one of the milling clamp sets. And um, we need something in that hole just to stop it pushing into the hole. Well, that one over the top, with it's a little bit twisted actually. Uh, drop him down. Just about. A couple of nuts on there. Like that. And what we should see, hopefully, is that bearing. Put it in a vice, but I'm just trying to demonstrate this. This here. He says, well stuck. Okay. So plan B. Just going to go and find something that sits in that top stem a little bit better. Back in a moment. Okay, I've, I've took a washer off the, uh, the other side of that little cap head bolt I've used as a spacer there, sort of trying to true everything up a little bit. So hopefully, it should. There we go. Pull that bearing off. For those who've probably not seen one of these before, this is actually an old um, MCA motorcycle. I can't remember the motorcycle accessories or motorcycle Aston or accessories Aston, something like that. Um, 
from days ago when I worked in a motorbike shop. Um, they're, <coughs> they're available on uh, on the likes of eBay. They're much more common now. But at the time I had that, it was uh, quite a specialist tool, and um, so I've had it many years. I actually got got one of the modern sets. Where are we? I bought this one a while back because it had got the, the smaller one in it. So there's a there's a modern version with the uh, the smaller bearing thing and <coughs> various adapters again. So uh, quite a useful thing if you're regularly taking bearings off. Uh, off shafts. <coughs> Apologies for coughing, I've still got a remains of a cold. So now we've got that off. We can take Take this into the. Uh, we'll take this into the garage, and we'll press press that out of the uh, out of the bottom yoke. Um, there seems to be a thing at the moment for, for calling things triple trees. I don't know where that's come from. Um, they always used to be called top and bottom yokes when I was uh, when I was doing it. So uh, new sort of phrase that seems to have appeared. So uh, I'll be back in a moment and uh, we'll be in the garage. Right, well, I've set up at the press. Um, I've got a little packer in there just to uh, stop me damaging that thread, although that's likely to be scrapped anyway. And there's a little bit of a, a packer just under there, just to level everything up and make, it, make sure it's vertical. Just before I press this, I'm just going to warm this up a little bit at the bottom. Just to um, just to help it come out of there a little bit easier without dragging out the meaning out of it. Because now damp that is, the moisture that's come out of that looks like it's melting, which is water. Funny how you find a pair of gloves that are different colours. I'm sure I've got another pair of the same sort of out. Okay, let's see what this does. Oh yeah, no problem at all. So if you can't see that, that's pressing out. Very easily. There's our stem. Um, what it looks like is it's made in, looks like a standard Norton stem brazed into a, a sleeve. So uh, we've got that option. We can either make a new stem completely or we can um, make an adapter sleeve for it. We'll have a see when everything's cooled down. I'll have a, of a measure and uh, see which way we go with it. Right, we've got our two uh, two stems there, the one we've taken out and the one the new one. So we've got we've got a difference in length of about about that much there. 
probably about an inch, three quarters of an inch or so. Um, what we need to establish, it's a little bit warm, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, is the height from the bottom of there to the top of there. Will that be sufficient with that in? Possibly not. Possibly not. Um, you just get a, a height gauge. Um, <coughs> or depth gauge. Pretty elaborate that. We don't look the tape measure. Keep it simple. So we need. We got there. Just under eight and a quarter. Um, eight and three sixteenths from the bottom of the uh, the bear into the top of the stem. If we have that in, we're going to be short by, yeah, we're short by quite a bit. So 8 and 3 sixteenths puts us there. So we've only got a short engagement into there. Not much at all. So our options are probably better making a complete new stem looking at that because if I make one I could make one where that presses into the bearing but that part of the presses into this adapter for the bearing rather but that part of the stem will only be in the bottom yoke by probably about a quarter of an inch um, so not very good. I'd sooner have that right the way through the yoke, well supported, and uh, plus you know it's going to come up up square. So we will set about making a new steering stem of uh, of the appropriate length. I think for now, then, since we've got to do that, this section of the video will do. Um, it's getting a bit late on now and uh, it's getting cold again and I'm coughing, breathing a little bit, breathing's got, <coughs> <Is that? coughs> excuse me, breathing's getting a little bit difficult so uh, for now I'll leave it at that and uh, I'll return either with another episode or uh, continued uh, presently, we'll see where we, uh, we end up so uh, Bye for now and uh, see you again on the other side as they say.